everyone, summer is over and winter is coming, which means it is the advent of bulking season, the time that people take advantage of not wearing bikinis and crop tops and instead wearing sweaters and comfy clothes in order to put on a little bit of weight and build and shape their body the way that they want to. So today I wanted to make a video all about how to build those curves that a lot of people are after and kind of get a smaller waist at the same time. If you want to have your goal body this summer, now is the time to start working on it. Now is the time to start adding things on so that once you end up cutting for summer and chisel things away, you're left with the exact shape that you want to have. That being said, really quick, I do want to say this is an aesthetics focused video, but I just want to remind everyone that if you don't have a good relationship with your body, if you hate your body and hate yourself, changing the way you look oftentimes is not going to fix that. That's often a much more deep-rooted issue that I really recommend working on first before you dive into chasing aesthetics through exercise and diet. The idea that everybody is bikini body ready is 100% true. Like no matter what you look like, all you gotta do is put on a bikini, go to the beach, and you're good. Building a bigger butt, losing the last five pounds is often not actually going to change your own perception of yourself. If you are finding flaws in your body now that are really upsetting you, chances are you're still going to have that mindset that is only looking for flaws no matter what your body looks like. Even if you have your ideal physique, you're still going to find flaws in it. So I really do encourage everyone to work on your relationship with your body first and really get your mindset locked down and then we can dive into just aesthetically shaping and carving and changing your body. Throughout your journey, I encourage you to fall in love with exercise and just fall in love with fitness and treating your body right rather than using exercise and nutrition in order to get yourself to love your body more. So with that being said, hopefully that all makes sense. Let's dive into this video on how to shape your body, give yourself some curves, give yourself a nice tiny waist if that's what you want. If that's not what you want, that is totally okay. But if you're excited to learn the step-by-step -step process, give this video a thumbs up because it really does support me and my channel. Make sure you hit that subscribe button to see future videos from me like this and Let's get into it. So if you want to build some curves and give the illusion of a smaller waist, the number one thing you want to focus on is building muscle. Having a certain amount of fat on your body can help either accentuate the curves or define the curves a little bit differently, but the biggest thing that you need to do to build curves is build muscle. The best way to do this and kind of the only way to do this is to lift heavy weights. Now for a lot of women, this sounds really intimidating because for quite a long time, you never even saw a woman in the weight room. And there's this huge stigma around it that as soon as you touch a weight, you're going to start looking like a man. Mm. Newsflash, women hardly have any testosterone compared to men. It is really difficult for men to build muscle and get super muscly. For women, it takes a lot of effort and years of training and in oftentimes anabolic steroids in order to build enough muscle to actually look bulky or manly. So if you're scared to walk into the weight room for fear of suddenly looking super muscular and buff and you just don't like that aesthetic, do not fear. That will not happen to you unless you work your butt off. I've never worked with clay before like as an artist would, but I imagine it's somewhat similar to working with your body. If any of you work with clay and I'm just completely off base, let me know. But what I imagine happens is you take some clay and you just like put it together right? Like you have the clay, you start building the general shape of what you want. And so as you build that shape, you're adding things on to create the overall you know, shape that you're going for. And only once you have the overall shape, can you go in with like finer tools and create details and kind of strip things away here and there to create like the ultimate figure that you want. It's the same thing with muscle. Think of muscle as the clay. You have to put it on your body in strategic places that build the shape that you want before you can go in, do a cut, lose some fat to end up with the ultimate figure that you want to have. This is all super new to you and you want to start resistance training, lifting heavy, but you have no idea how. I have a few fitness starter kit videos all about how to lift heavy, everything that you need to know. So I will link those down there for you. The next big principle in building the exact shape that you want for your body is in frequency of training the body parts that you want to grow faster. So one of the big principles in resistance training is that frequency is correlated with muscle growth. So the more frequently you train a muscle group, the faster it will grow to a certain 
certain extent. You can't train every single day really heavy. You kind of have to find an optimal frequency for your body, but there is a difference where training a squat one day a week versus two days a week, the two days a week is going to help you see progress a lot faster. So for any muscle groups that you want to grow faster than the rest of your body, you want to train those muscle groups with an increased frequency compared to the rest of your body. So if you are trying to build more curves into your body, the two big places that are necessary to train are the bigger parts of the curves, right? So your upper body like here-ish and then your lower body here-ish so that your waist looks smaller in comparison to your upper body and your lower body. So that will not only give you more like a curvy look, but it'll also give you the illusion of a smaller waist because the top and the bottom are bigger. So for your upper body, you really want to focus on your back. If you grow your back, grow your lats, kind of your shoulders a little bit as well, that's going to make your top half look bigger and wider, which will make your waist look comparatively smaller. On the lower half, a lot of the training should focus on the glutes. Now, the glutes are composed of three different muscle groups. There is one main, like the big muscle that does most of the work, that's the gluteus maximus, that's used in squats, hip thrusts, deadlifts, basically any movement that has a lot of glute activation, but there's two other little muscles in there as well that are also important to train. And one of the best ways to hit these is with abduction exercises. These are the exercises that lift your legs outwards rather than like up and down. So a squat isn't really much abduction because you're just going up and down. Whereas, you know, the, some people call it the good girl, bad girl machine where you stick your legs on the thing and do that with your legs, that's opening your legs. That's an abduction exercise. And so what this is gonna do is it's also going to shape your, your side booty so that when you look at yourself from the front, you can see the little bit of like curve here. So you're not only gonna be curvy from the side, you're gonna be curvy from the front as well. Right, so for your bottom half of your curve, you want to focus on your glutes and train them from all angles to you know build them at all angles on the sides and in the back. And then depending on the current shape of your body, you might also want to focus on your quads and or your hamstrings. For me personally, I have like no hamstrings. This is a big struggle for me. It's really hard for me to build my hamstrings. And so my legs look like flat from the back. So the biggest curve for me that I want to work on is actually developing my hamstrings a little bit to give a little bit more extra shape to the back of my leg. Some people, if you have like no quads, maybe you want to build up your quads a little bit because that will add some shape and definition to your lower body as well. This is really where it comes down to your current physique and where you're at versus what you want to change to give you the shape that you want to have. So in summary of that, the muscle groups that you want to add extra volume and frequency to in order to build more curves are your back, specifically your lats, a little bit of your shoulders, definitely your glutes from all angles, and your quads and or your hamstrings depending on what your current physique looks like. And the way you want to add extra frequency and volume to these groups is not just by only focusing on those groups. Like I don't recommend not training any else. I definitely recommend training your whole body so that you get kind of an even balance in your body. Now there are many different ways you can do this. One of my favorite ways is to do two to three full body training sessions per week where you just hit everything and then on the other days do very small lighter training sessions specifically on the muscles that you want to target and grow faster. Another way to do this is to follow an upper lower body split so you can do two days upper body, two days lower body and then the fifth day of the week you just focus on the muscle groups that you want to grow specifically. So you can do lighter work. If you're gonna try to hit like your whole body or you know you could do like lower upper glute focus maybe little hamstrings upper lower something like that this is really gonna depend on what your schedules like what your training frequency can be what is sustainable for you but the key is just adding extra volume and training frequency to the muscles that you want to develop faster and in case this is a little bit confusing with me just saying it at you I've gone ahead and made a free little download for you that'll give you some of my favorite exercises to grow the specific muscle groups that I talked about as well as different ways of incorporating higher volume and training frequency on those specific muscles. So the link to download that is down in the description box below. Definitely recommend you go get your hands on that because it'll be particularly useful if you're trying to shape your body in any particular way. But there is one more thing specifically about how you train that I want to briefly mention in order to maximize the effectiveness of your training. And that is to switch your training frequency every three to six weeks. Your body starts to adapt to new training programs and styles of training within about 
about four weeks. And if you just continue past that point of where your body's adapted to it, the amount that it's going to change as a result of your training starts to diminish really quickly. Ideally, you want to change training styles just as your body is starting to adapt so that as your body is adapting, you kick it into a new stimulus and it has to adapt even further and more. And the reason I mention this is because I see a lot of people with the problem where they plateau and they can't make progress and it's because they're just sticking to the same thing because maybe they saw great progress with it at first. Hint, it's because when you first start training in a modality, that's when maximum adaptation occurs. So you're going to see the most change. So they get stuck in that because they saw such great progress in the first few weeks and their body adapted and they just keep hitting it hard and hard and hard and they can't make progress. It's because your body's already adapted to it. Like it doesn't have to change too much to keep up with what you're doing. As soon as you change training style, your body is going to be forced to adapt much differently and much bigger. So you're going to start seeing those changes again. Now you don't want to be switching every workout or every week because you do need to give your body some time to really kick into gear and adapt or else you're just going to confuse it. It's going to be trying to adapt to too many things and not be able to make effective change. So every three to six weeks, as soon as you feel that your body starts to plateau, move on, get to the next thing. The next piece of this is huge and key. And if you don't do it, none of the rest of this stuff is really going to work unless you're a newbie and getting the newbie gains. And that is you got to eat a lot. And by a lot, I mean in a surplus, you just have to eat more than your maintenance. I recommend between like 100, 200, maybe 250 calories over your maintenance calories. You need extra fuel to build mass. Eating in a calorie surplus is necessary to build muscle or else you're not going to have extra nutrition, extra fuel to actually build muscle tissue, right? Like you're trying to build mass on your body. So you need extra intake of mass in the form of food in order to put mass on your body. Do not, and I repeat, do not get stuck in the trap of the diet mentality where you're trying to restrict your calories while trying to build muscle. That will be entirely counterproductive. You will get nowhere. You'll just be putting a lot of extra stress on your body, not giving enough fuel, and it's just a recipe for disaster. Instead, realize that this process should have you gaining weight because you should be putting on muscle mass. So you need to feed your body accordingly. If you do everything correctly, most of the weight you put on should be muscle and there should be very minimal fat gain. But if you're just stressing your body out by restricting calories and working out way too hard, that's a recipe for damaging your body to the point where you're just gonna gain a ton of extra fat anyway. Do not be afraid of the big Chipotle burrito bowl. Do not be afraid to go out with friends and have a burger. Use this time to enjoy life, like enjoy food, eat the stuff that you've been wanting to eat, like get out of that restrictive mindset and let yourself just enjoy everything that food and socializing around food has to offer. With eating more, you're gonna wanna make sure you're also getting enough protein. I recommend about 0.7 to one gram per pound of lean body weight. You can use your goal weight to estimate your lean body weight, that's gonna be close enough. And then I also recommend increasing your carb intake. Now it is possible to build muscle, low carb, keto, etc. But the research is pretty conclusive. It's a lot more efficient to build muscle with a higher carb intake. Carbs provide a really good fuel source for your workouts and also for muscle recovery and repair. So as you're increasing your calories, I recommend increasing protein and carbs. And then if you want to increase fat, if you just feel better increasing fat, you totally can do that as well. And then I cannot recommend enough prioritizing recovery. You don't build muscle in the gym. When you're in the gym, you're actually breaking muscle down. It's not until you refeed, give yourself nutrition and sleep and rest and let your body recover that the muscle actually builds and gets bigger and stronger. The best thing you can do to optimize recovery is make sure you're getting enough sleep. Aim for at least eight hours a night. I don't care if you're someone who can get by on five or six. I could do that in college. Was it optimal? No. Sleep is key to building muscle and to allowing your body to recover so that you are at optimal performance when you hit the gym next. If you have trouble prioritizing sleep but are really good at prioritizing working out, think of sleep as a second workout. Like it is just as important as the workout that you're doing. If you are doing just a ton of workouts but your recovery sucks, you're not gonna make any progress. You're probably going to actually regress and maybe injure slash degrade your body in the process. So. Sleep is just as important as the workout itself. So, so far in this video, we've covered the main principles of how to 
build a curvier physique that has the illusion of a smaller waist. These are lifting heavy, making sure you're training the right muscle groups with increased frequency. Again, make sure you download my free guide to help you with specific exercises and suggestions for increasing frequency. Also changing up your training style every few weeks, eating in a surplus, and focusing on recovery. Understanding these principles is key to making those changes. If you have any questions about any of this, what you should do, how to apply anything that I've talked about, definitely let me know down in the comments below. I'll do my best to get back to you. In the meantime, if you like this video, if you found it helpful at all, please give it a big thumbs up. Share this video. I'd really appreciate it. Share it on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all the places that you can share things. Share it with your friends, your family, your neighbors. If you want to see more videos from me all about health and fitness, you can check them out over here. If you want to see videos from me in the future, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the little notification bell so you get notified when I post a new video, and I will see you very soon. <laughs> Bye.